نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم فكتد دكتور اسماعيل نور وكامل الجماع Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Isra and the Mi'raj and its implications for the Sahawat. It's a very exciting topic and it is a topic whose importance will continuously increase, not decrease. As we enter into the last phase, the last phase of the life of Dajjal. What is the Isra and Miraj? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam first struggled all through the years in Makkah in a hostile environment. Never yielding, never compromise, holding firmly to the truth, regardless of the price that he had to pay. When he had been tested, and when the world had become dark for him, ten long years of struggle, and now Allah takes away his beloved wife. And Allah takes away his uncle Abu Talib, the head of the Banu Hashim, who would offer the protection of the tribe. And he's without security. And he leaves Makkah and he goes to Taif in search of security. And Taif pelted him with stones and his blood going from his body. But he does not give up. No, and we also must not give up. No, he returns to Mecca. He cannot enter his own city. Why? That's the price of holding on to the truth. If we have never paid a price, perhaps we are not holding on to the truth. Perhaps we only part time and not full time. And that's why we have not had to pay any price. He stands outside his own city. He cannot enter because of no security. One of the mushrikun, the idol worshipper, he comes with his son and he offers, he offers tribal protection. And now the Prophet can enter the city. But soon he will have to make his run. He'll have to give up city, give up home, give up everything and move, migrate. That's coming around the corner. Soon he'll have to go to the city of Yadrib, which subsequently will be given the new name of Madina to Nabi. And there he's going to meet the Jews. There are lots of them in Madina. Why are they there? Why are they in Madina? Come on, Rabbi, tell me why are you there? Because they know that someone is coming here. They don't know whether it's going to be the Messiah, al Masih. They don't know because they rejected Nabi Isa. They don't know whether it's going to be the Prophet, the Nabi Musa al-Islam and Prophet. They don't know who it is. But they're there. And there's going to be a critically important confrontation when he arrives in Madi. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervenes and takes him on a journey. A journey which is a blessing for him. The fruit of all those years of struggle, the fruit of having stood up with a backbone made of steel, never yielding, 
never compromise, regardless of how hostile the environment was. Is this not the Sunnah? Where has the Sunnah fled today? Today you stand like that, your own friends will leave you. Today you stand like that and they say you are a terrorist. It's a lonely thing to be a Muslim in the world today. It's a lonely thing to follow the Sunnah of Muhammad. Not only did Allah bless him with Isra and Miraj, in consequence of that struggle which he had engaged, but in preparation for what is to come, when he travels from the Hijra, and in preparation for what is to come when Allah takes him away from this world, and this Ummah will have to be Akhirul Zaman. That's why he was taken on this journey. So that today here in Sidiawa, that journey into the Samawat will come back to us to guide us, to guide us as we face the world in which we now live. It is not an easy topic. Now, if we are to go more, to do more than simply the periphery of narrating a story, anybody could do that. It is a challenging topic, requiring intellectual and spiritual struggle to benefit if we are to derive what is so significant in this event. Nabi Muhammad is a sick. And the angel Jibra'il and Islam comes to meet him and asks him to mount on a heavenly animal, Burak. And the animal takes him on a journey into the Samawat and back to the material universe, into the Samawat and back into the material universe, while he is traveling from Makkah to Jerusalem. Is this happening by accident? The Murak comes down, caravan is camped for the night. And then the Muhammad and Islam comes down, comes up, Murak. There's a container of water, and there was a lid on it. And he removed the lid and he drank the water. Is this by accident? From the Samawat, back to the material universe, and then back to the Samawat. Is there a message being sent to us about travel? Or is it just a matter of making the water to provide food from the journey? And then again he comes back down. A caravan has camped and a camel has broken loose. And he calls out to the people who are sleeping, your camel has broken loose. And then up again, why is Burak doing this? Is it to teach a lesson? pertaining to travel from this world of space and time to the parallel universe. How important is that topic? We will see later, inshallah. And when he arrives in Jerusalem, <coughs> the prophets of Allah are there, but he sees them in their terrestrial form. And then subsequently, as he goes through the Samawan, he sees them in their celestial form. And he marvels at the difference. The terrestrial and the celestial. He leads a salat in which all the Abdiya are salat practically. And the salat takes place in Masjid al Aqsa. But at that time, Masjid al-Aqsa was a garbage dump. There was no building. So is this the Masjid al-Aqsa of this world and space and time? Or is it the Masjid al-Aqsa in another world of space? And then Jibra'il alayhi salam offers him two cups. One with milk and the other with, you know what, in uh, 
South America, that part of the world from where I come, where you have the American Indians, they call it fire water. Fire water. Why? Is this by accident? Or is a profound message being sent for Akhirul Do we need to put our antennas up and minutely examine every single event that occurs on this event? Is it, is it a journey? Is it that in Akhirul Zaman mankind are going to be tested with alcohol? And alcoholism and drug addiction is going to destroy and we must prepare ourselves to choose that which is good and wholesome, milk, rather than that which is the mother of all evil. And he chooses the milk. And Jibra'il alayhi salam replied and said, you've chosen well, you've chosen pitta. <coughs> and then he ascended to the Samawah. And each Sama, there are seven of them. They call in physics the parallel universes. The physicists no longer doubt the existence of these parallel universes. Different worlds of space and time. And as he traverses the worlds of space and time, different than Bia alayhi salam, welcome. And the angels welcome. But there was one angel who never smiled. When you meet someone who does not smile, you're not very comfortable with such a person. Which reminds me, Dr. Noor, I have traveled around the world a lot of this. I have never found a people with a sweeter smile than in Malaysia. Both men and women, both men and a more artificial smile than an American politician smile. <laughs> yes, you can judge people. You can judge people and their sincerity by their smile. But this one would not smile. Who is he? Jibra'il alayhi salam replied and said, this is Malik, the keeper of Jannah. Not even for you he smile. Nothing happens by accident on this journey. Could you kindly allow me, ask him to allow me to take a look? Jibra'il al Islam doesn't have to ask him politely, Malik, will you be so kind as to allow me? Because Allah says about Jibra'il, Muta'in Tanma'ani, you must obey him. So Malik has to remove the covering and the flames shoot out. Frightful. And after the flames have subsided, he now looks down into Jannah. And he sees a number of things. He sees men, men, not women, men, sitting at the table. And there is that meat which is fresh, clean, nicely cooked, lazat, makanan lazat. And then there's the other meat, which is rotten, stinky, maggots in it. And these men are eating the rotten meat, instead of eating the good and fresh. Is there a message? Who are these men? Is there a message for us in Akhirul Zaman? These are the men who left the wives of Allah and made halal for them, to commit zina. Zina is the destruction. No, you cannot survive after the Zaman without Noor. Noor is not sold in the stock market. You can't get Noor in the supermarket. Noor comes only from Allah. And without Noor, you just like cattle. And if you walk down the road of Zina, you will live in darkness without any hope. That's the message of Isra and Miraj. Tonight, we have to repeat that message to our young ones. For the danger for them is awesome, awesome, awesome. Young men, young lions, their hormones are raging. 
And this is that age in which women will be dressed and yet naked. And so the invitation for Zina, the door is open. And sex is as freely available as the sunshine. Just leave the Muslim village and go into the Western civilization. And you see how they live. And then he saw some men with hot berries, and their berries are transparent, and inside of their berries there are snakes. Terrible. Who are these men? And Jibra'il and Islam replied, that these are the men who consume When last did you hear a khutbah? For your Salatul Jum'ah, in which the Khatib taught and explained the subject of Rima. <laughs> Since the last revelation to come down from Allah in the Quran, the very last. And in that revelation, Allah declared war. You persist with Rima. But Adhanu bi harbim min Allahi wa Rasul. Take notice of a declaration of war from Allah. But who cares? Who cares to me? And when we come to teach the subject of riba in the banking system, the subject of riba in the monetary system, if you notice when I stood up for salat, I took this up. I did not perform my salat with this in my pocket. Why? Listen. Your brother Imran Hussein has done his homework and he's not talking idly when he says that the money which we are now using, the US dollar, the French franc, and the Euro, and the Malaysian ringgit, Pakistani rupee, and what and what not, what not, what not. It's bogus. It's fraudulent. It's utterly haram. But when will you ever find a scholar of Islam? One of your teachers, your gurus, who will stand up and teach me that. And yet it's the truth. I've done my homework, I know my subject. It's riba. The bad thing is the riba in the monetary system. There's riba all around us. But who cares? I was very bad for me. That was the message from Israel and Miraj. And then he's allowed to see Jannah. <laughs> <coughs> and in Jannah, oh, in Jannah we found majority were women. Majority were women. This is not something to castigate our mothers and sisters and daughters. This is the mother of all we can call to the women of Islam. If your head cannot bow to the Quran, Sister, you are in trouble. You can take your PhD and throw it in a garbage bin. All your academic accomplishments, you can throw it into a garbage bin. My sister, if that pretty head of yours cannot bow to the Quran, yes, I know they're going to be angry with me, but I don't preach Islam to these people. It doesn't bother me. The head must bow. And most women in the world do not Muslims. That head of theirs cannot bow. No. That head of theirs cannot bow to the Quran. That's why the majority will enjoy a woman. So you want to ask me, well, where is the book? That our heads will not bow to the Quran in Brahman. See, I'll give it to you. And then he was allowed to see Jannah. He saw a most beautiful girl and he described her. Who is that girl? This was the last gift. This is the last gift to so one of the companions. And so Islam is sending a message of the status of the faith. In Akhir Zaman, you've got a choice to make. 
On this side, there is lust. A lot of it is that it was government. Lust. And with lust, you will go to her. And you will use her. And you will exploit her. And you will enjoy her. And you will abuse her. And you degrade her. And you discard her. And she will remain a memory for just a fleeting moment. And that memory will eventually get as many fit for the garbage. And that is the child's plan as he brings the feminist revolution and the sexual revolution. And on the other side there is love. Lust and love are opposite. In this one is like a wine that you drink to satisfy your thirst. But strangely, the more you drink, the greater the thirst. The thirst never goes with lust. And on this side there is love. And one sip with love. And the thirst is quenched. This is the way to go to a woman. This is the way to show respect for a woman. And the best of all gifts that Allah will give to you in Jannah is a woman. And the gift will be given the description of the woman. So don't you want a piece of Jannah here on earth? Why don't you get married? Do you get a piece of Jannah here on earth? This is a message not only for men, but also for women. That if you go down as a woman down the road of Zina, and there's so many women now going down that road, you're going to end up as garbage. Because lust belongs to the garbage bin. And love is something that is free for so the child gets you to postpone marriage and postpone marriage and postpone marriage and don't have to go to university. You stupid people used to get your girls married when they were 14 and 15. But we are now civilized. We are progressive. We have, we have risen to a higher state than you fools. We don't marry our girls at 14 and 15 anymore. No! Our girls are married when they're 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yes, you get the price. Why don't you tell us the price? Why do you hide it? How many of them are still virgins? Be careful when you deal with this subject. Because it's not going to be comfortable for people who are brainwashed by their child. This is the gift that Allah has for you in Jannah. The gift of a beautiful girl. With the description of that girl given by Nabi Muhammad nothing happens in the Islam era by accident. Everything is profound with meaning and significance, particularly for Akhil Zaman. And then he returns. And when he returns, <coughs> The spot on which he was lying was still warm. So this journey took place in a fraction of a moment. It was not a journey in space and time. No. You can't travel to Jerusalem and up into the Samawat and back. And the spot on which he was lying is still warm. No. It has to be a journey in which you left this world of space and time. And you travel other words of speech and time. That appears to me to be the most profound, the most important, the most significant of all the messages which are being sent to Isra and Mira. They question him. If you did perform this journey, why don't you describe Jerusalem for us? And Allah put Jerusalem before his eyes that he was able to describe. The two caravans arrived in Mecca. And when they were questioned, they said, yes, it happened. 
We put the water there and there was a lid on the water. And there was water in the container. In the morning when we got up, the lid was still there but the water was gone. And the other caravan confirmed, yes, we were sleeping and we heard a voice crying out, your, car your camera has broken loose. We, go, we woke up, we saw nobody, but we saw the camera had broken loose, confirming the dinner. And yet there were Muslims who left Islam because of it. And today there are Muslims who leave Islam because of what we say in the Quran. It is unpalatable for the new sophisticated, educated intellect and personality. They want an Islam that will be in, give them, allow them to live comfortably with the mother for them. That's not going to happen tonight. Nabi Muhammad then spent a number of years releasing information <coughs> little by little, bit by bit of what he had seen on that journey. And we now leave the first verse of Surah al Isra and we go to Surah al Najm. And in Surah al Najm, we are told that Fadana Fatadalla, he approached and he gave him Rosa. فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى And he approached so close that he was at a distance of, you know, the bow and the arrow? Two bows. You can take one bow, put it like this, and then a second one and put it like this. And you get a distance this much. Are you looking at me? Two bows. But may Allah bless my teacher of blessed memory, Mawlana Dr. Mawlana Sahib who instituted in the curriculum for us as students of Islam a subject entitled the Islamic Philosophy of Science and Imran had to study the Islamic Philosophy of Science because of Mulana Fatur Rahman and he brought an eminent scientist to teach us and that eminent <laughs> scientist told us don't put the bows like this Two bows like this. Put the two bows like this. If you put the two bows like this, they will touch at a point. A point by definition has no length, no breadth, no thickness. It is non spatial. And so, for Kana Kaba Kawusaini Awu Adna means that the approach which is now taking place is outside of, of the framework of space and of time. That's the two goals. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى And Allah now gave to His servant what He gave him as inspiration. مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادِ مَا رَأَى He's seeing He's seeing a lot of things that Allah is showing him. But he's not seeing with these eyes. Ma kazab al fuad. He's seeing with the heart. And so we have now epistemology. Their epistemology, the godless world, is the knowledge comes only from external observation and rational inquiry. That's the epistemology of your modern universe around the world. But the epistemology of the Quran is different. That we don't see with one eye, we see with two. We not only see with external observation and rational inquiry, but we also see with an internal eye that the heart can also <coughs> see. They don't teach that in any university on the face of the earth. If a university were to teach that, they'll shut down the university. Ma kazab al fuad ma raha. His heart did not reject that which the heart saw. 
but the heart will only see if there is no in the heart and if you go down the road of Sina, you will have no no in your heart. So you will live in doubt. So be careful when the door to Zina is open to you. Be careful. You must remember that when you go into that room, you're going to live in doubt. Not only does Zina destroy those so the heart can see, but the same thing with Riva. The same thing with Riva. That's why we had the men in the meat, the good meat and the rough meat. And that's why you had the men with the pot belly, with snakes in the belly. Ma kazab al fuhadu ma ra. And then the surah goes on to say, <coughs> That Nabi Muhammad reached to the farthest point that he could go. Sidratul Muntaha, the farthest low tree. Beyond that, Ayyir alayhi salam could not go. Only Muhammad alayhi salam. But Allah used that tree, the symbolism of that tree. To again provide more knowledge to the Prophet. He is looking at the tree, the Sidra. So not only is he seeing with the internal eye, but he is seeing with Basa, Basa, spiritual inside, Basa. And that Basa of his with which he is traveling does not waver, does not become tired. But when Musa alayhi salam was on the mountain and said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Harini, Anzur ilayh, show me yourself, I want to see you. And Allah said, Lantarani, you cannot see me, not with these eyes, Musa alayhi salam. But look to the rock. And then he directed his divine tajalli to the rock. And the rock exploded. And Musa Islam fell down unconscious. But over here, he's gazing. Ma zagal basar. And his gaze does not waver at all. He doesn't fall down unconscious. <laughs> He saw the greatest of the ayat of Allah and he now chooses to disclose what he saw piecemeal over a period of time. So we get it little by little, little by little and you got to be able to connect the dots when you read the seerah. It is at this moment that he is looking at the tree that he saw a woman dressed and yet naked. It is at this moment that he is looking at the tree that he saw a woman dressed like men. The trousers, now it become blue jeans. And then nearly all of them have joined a particular jamaat called the blue jeans jamaat. And the blue jeans become tighter and tighter. Women will be dressed like men. Then you have a jacket because you got to dress like a man when you're walking and assuming the functional role of men in society. Because you face the same morning traffic and you face the same evening traffic. Anything that a man does, a woman can do. And I'm now a professional woman. So you got to dress professionally. You do not dress like a woman when you're a professional. No, you've got to dress like a man. He said it. And he saw it on the tree. So you see her with a jacket cut like a man. And I went to a hotel in Jakarta and I saw all the women working in that hotel for the one time. This he saw. And he saw men dressing like women. Why would a man dress like a woman? That's uh, to attract another man. That's why. And so homosexuality will become rampant. 
If a man is to dress as a woman, the first thing he has to do is to shave off his beard. And we never shave off our beards. Not those who followed Muhammad and they used to work. Until they shaved it off and we followed them and that is the truth whether you like it or you don't. So if you choose to shave off your beard, you better prepare yourself on judgment day. When you stand before Allah, you explain to him why. Why did he put a beard on the face of the beard? Why? Two reasons. Two reasons. The first one, of course, you all know it. To distinguish the male from the female. The divine wisdom. So you can tell from a distance who is a man and who is a woman. Just look at the face. You don't have to look at any other part of the body. But what's the second reason, Dr. Ismailu? What's the second reason why Allah put a beard on the face of the male? Dr. No does know. Anybody knows? Answer? So children can play with it. Pick up a baby. And the first thing the baby will do is start to play with it. He saw. <coughs> That the time will come when you will not find a single person in all of mankind who will not be consuming riba. He saw it. He saw the jal. He saw Gog and Magog. He saw the Malhama, or what the Christians call the Armageddon. And the Malhama has started, let me tell you that. The Malhama has now started by prophecy. The prophecy war going on. In Ukraine now. They're fighting Russia by proxy. It was by proxy in Syria, now by proxy in Ukraine. And if you look carefully, you will see the pattern that's going to eventually conclude or culminate with the Malhamma. Now, Malhamma is not one war. It appears that the Malhamma is going to be a series of wars which will culminate with nuclear war. He saw all of these things out there that came back and is now disclosing them little by little over a period of time. Now then, we come to the most important part of our topic. Implications for today of the Surah Mirad. We were already in delivering the talk, pointed out many of the things, for example, Riba and Zina and so on. But the most important of all that pertained to the Isra and Mirage was movement from this world of space and time to the parallel universe. How important is this? The greatest fitna that mankind will experience from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the last day will be the fitna of the Jah. You know that you are now living in the age of the Dajjal who wants to impersonate the Messiah and therefore who has to rule the world from Jerusalem and therefore who has to liberate the Holy Land because the Holy Land is on the Muslim Holy Land already. You've got to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. He's done that already. You've got to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land and get the Jews to believe that this is holy Israel. He's done that already. He's got to get Israel to become the ruling state in the world, and that is about to happen. And then he will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am the Messiah. That's coming around the corner. So you know you're living in the age of the judge. And therefore you know you're living in that age when Islamic scholarship has to be the best in the entire history of Islam. You need the best scholars of Islam in this age, better than everything that we've had before. The tragedy is we have the worst. We have the worst today, the worst, the worst, the worst. That's our tragedy. The Prophet of Islam, Islam says, recite the first ten ayahs of Surah Al Surah Al Gaf, protection of the Mitna of the Jah. The first ten ayat of Surah Al-Gaf take us to the story of the young men in the cave. So there is the young men in the cave. He 
important information in Kundaja. What is it? They slept in the cave for 300 years, was it? And some say 309, Luna and Sola. And then Allah woke them up to see which of them could best calculate how long had they been in the way of the cave. So one of them said to the others, we've been here for a day or a part of a day. Okay? And of course we found that very strange. Why? Because if there's something wrong, they can't see. If, if you've been in the cave for 300 years, then when you wake up, your fingernail should be as long as from Sikya Wamsa to Kira Sisi. <laughs> huh? And your beard from here to Johobaru. <laughs> so can't they see what's wrong with them? How could they see a day or part of the day? You went to sleep at age 20 and you wake up at age 320. You're not going to look the same. But they said a day or a part of a day. Indicating Listen carefully, indicating that the stay in the cave of 300 years was not spent in biological time. I don't think anyone can dispute that. We're not dealing with biological time. They could have stayed in the cave for a thousand years. They would still be the same age as where they went to sleep. Wherever they were during that time, that's a world in which women don't need cosmetics. They remain forever young. <coughs> forever young. So they spent 300 years in the summer one. Gone. In our world, it's been the time. Because they did not spend it in biological time. Good? Good? Are you agree? Wrong. Answer is wrong. This answer is wrong. Well, there we get to the answer is wrong. وَتَرَ شَمْسَ إِذَا تَلَعَتَ ذَا وَوَمْ كَحْبِهِمْ ذَا تَلْيَمِينَ What are people? What? وَتَرَ شَمْسَ إِذَا تَلَعَتَ ذَا وَوَمْ كَحْبِهِمْ ذَا تَلْيَمِينَ وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ فَرْبُمْ ذَا تَشْمَانَ وَهُمْ فِي فَتْرِ When the sun came up in the morning, the sunlight entered the cave from the right, and when the sun set in the evening, the sunlight entered in the cave to live, Left. And we cause their bodies to roll to the right and to the left in attraction to sunlight. So every morning the bodies were rolling from here to there, to the right. And every evening the bodies were rolling from here to there to the left. Attraction, sunlight. And this is space. And this is time. Morning and evening. And so they spent the 300 years in our world of space and time. Our previous answer was wrong. But even this one is wrong. <laughs> but then, how do we solve this riddle? This is why Allah said this verse. Right? You went up, came down, drank the water. Oh, have you forgotten? Went up, came down, your camel is loose. Okay? Up and down, up and down is not happening by accident. It is meant to trigger our capacity for profound thought. Because you're going to need it now. In our That it is possible to travel back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, in less than a fleeting moment, in less than a fraction of a moment. You can travel. Was the Quran, as the Quran spoke to us about that? Yes, when I entered the masjid just now, before the Salatul Maghrib, Suratul Mulk, which we saw in here. And in Suratul Mulk, Allah spoke and He said, Ba'arawudu billahi min shaitan al-Rahim, Barakatati biyadihi al-Mulk, wa'ala kulli shayin, Fani al-Zi qalaq al-Mulk, wa al-Hayat al-Yaqubu, wa'ala kulli shayin, 
الذي خلق سبع سماوات إباقا It is was created the seven parallel universities, universities alongside each other, beside each other. Ma Tara, Ma Tara, you do not see, you will not see. Ma Tara is seeing, he's talking about the Quran. Fi Khalqi Rahmani Min Tafawud. You will not find any defect. You will not see any defect in Allah's creation, meaning the Samawat. فَرْجِعِ الْبَصَرَ هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ Let your Basar return. Let your Basar return. Do you find any defect? I, could it be more plain than that? That Allah is inviting us to travel to the Samawat. And the travel to the Samawat will be with the Basar. Mazag al Basar. His Basar did not wave when he looked at the tree. And then <coughs> in Surah Al Rahman, Ya Ma'ashar al Jinni Walins, O assembly of mankind in the Jinn, in Istatatu, and Tanzulu, Min Aftaris Samawati, Walafan Fudu. If you wish to embark on the effort to travel, to traverse the Samawat, go ahead, proceed with the effort. Go ahead, fun for go ahead, proceed with the effort. And I want you to say, you cannot penetrate the jazz, and therefore you cannot penetrate the jazz strategy, the ultimate strategy, and this is the page of the jazz today. You cannot do it. Unless and until you are someone living in this world, but also accessing other worlds, traversing other worlds. The normal way in which we traverse other worlds is the spiritual insight. And then people will say, he probably has a chin talking to him. <laughs> he probably has a chin talking to him. And then the Salafi will come around and say, only Allah knows the future. Take him round to sit and throw him to get garbage with. Only Allah knows the future. The normal way of traversing the Samawai for scholarship is to spiritual insight. And spiritual insight will only come when you do your own work. You've got to do your own work. You've got to plan if you want to read. You've got to use the intellect, the rational faculty first, before the inner sight to deliver knowledge. The two have to come together in what the Quran calls Majma'ul Bahrain. And so they went up and down for 300 years. They were in this world of space and time, morning and evening, morning and evening. And they were in another world of space and time because they were the same age. So it was constant movement back and forth, constant movement back and forth. Can we do it? Of course. Did your prophet not say to you, as salah to me arrange your movement? Have you forgotten that? The salah is the mirage of the movement. Salat is the mirage. And so it is with Basar in Salat that you travel. I want to now conclude by giving you an insight into the Jal's strategy to prevent you from traveling. The Prophet said that they start to slap and wudu with that in Salat. Wudu is the key to Salat. So if the Jal will corrupt your wudu, okay, the Salat is not going anywhere. <laughs> A man who is performing Salat. Sorry, the man was performing wudu, and the Prophet passed by and asked, What is the explanation to this waste of water, Israel? The man said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, is there such a thing as Israel, waste of water in wudu? Yes, said the Prophet. Yes, even if you are in front of a running stream of water, no shortage of water, do not exceed the limit. What's the limit? This is the limit. This is more than the amount of money, of water, a amount of water. 
Accordingly, you perform certain wudu. You take the container with your left hand and you pour some water on your right hand. Why? Because the right hand has to dip. And the, the cup that you make with your hand is the amount of water to use in every act of wudu. Can we do that today? Now we have the jar. Possible. So if you want to perform the wudu of the sunnah, one hand will have to be on the cap, opening and closing as you fill it with this amount of water. I invite you to go and travel the whole world of Islam. Go and travel the whole world of Islam if you want. We carry a handkerchief with you when you go so you can wipe your tears and see how people perform wudu today when they use that. If you use a container, uh, in Malaysia there are some places where you have a pool of water and you dip and you use a container for it. That is different. But this one with the tap, you will see the tap open and you see making masa on the head and the water is still flowing. You collect all that water 30, 40, 50 times this. Tell me will that will do be valid? Where there is such a Islam, one that is Islam. The jar and Gaga Gaga is destroying your wudu as a consequence of which your salat is going anyway. If you perform your salat and you have haram in your pocket, bogus, fraudulent, and haram, is your salat going to go anyway? You don't have to take my word for it, but you can check it out. Paper money and the electronic money that's coming to follow it. Israel is going to become the world's first cashless country. It's coming to Dajjal. You go and vote in elections in the modern state. You've not studied the subject, but you already have an opinion. Oh, if we don't go and vote, they're going to get power in this country. We have to go and vote shit. Okay, go ahead and vote. When you're in Jahannam, don't call me on the phone. The modern state came into being. After the Jah had created modern Western civilization and gave it a scientific and technological revolution, gave it military power which could not match by any power in the world. And they then went about demolishing all political systems in the world, including the Hilafa, and then replacing it with the modern state, which is built on the foundation of shit. Notice that's the pronunciation of the word. So pronounce it correctly. I'm talking to the Malay people. Listen to me. The pronunciation of the word is shirk, which is one syllable. Don't make it two. So you go and you hold the election then, and you believe your salad is going to get you somewhere. No. You go borrow money from the bank for interest because you're running a business as well. The curse of the prophet is upon you. How your salat will take you anyway. But the last one I want to talk about before I end is that Nabi Muhammad had many wives. Are you ashamed of that? Is there anyone who is ashamed? Do you think it was an accident that he had many wives? Nabi Dawood had many wives. Nabi Suleiman had many wives. Nabi Ibrahim had many wives. All the prophets were lost. And when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, almost certain he would have any wife. But the Jah came around and did a work of brainwashing. And the brainwashing is meant to get you to believe that good men, men who are models of society, are men who have only one wife. And so no woman in the world wants a husband to take a second wife. They would prefer to break up the marriage. I want to divorce, but I will not tolerate the second wife. Well, I have news for you. That the Quran is true. And in the Quran, Allah has permitted to remarry. The Jal doesn't like that. Because the Jal wants to take the men of this book and transform them into boys. People who are wearing long trousers to wear short pants. The Quran not only permits the real man, but the Prophet of Allah also gave the Sunnah. And that profound scholar of Islam, some people are going to be annoyed when I mention his name. 
but you don't have to listen to me you do many other shaykhs out there you can listen to them if you don't like I mentioned you name you know the shaykh or that part of shaykh that you need it in Arabic and if I mention his name and you don't like that you can go and listen to somebody else leave him around to say hello I'm not going to be programmed but to your taste Sheikh Al-Akbar Fahidi Ibn Arabi was a great star, a great star. And he spoke about him. And he pointed out that of all the ayat of Allah, and that ayah is the symbol to which you could push Allah, of all the ayat of Allah, the ayah which is closest of all to a man and woman, she is his door to heaven. She is his door. This is Bohemi in the art. And so there was wisdom, divine wisdom, when Allah committed plural marriage. He not only committed plural marriage, more than He said, when the wars took place and many men died, they lost them often. He said, when khiftum Allah took situ fil If you fear, that you will not be able to do justice now to all these orphans. What to do with all these orphans? Allah responds and says, here is one thing you will do. But nisa. Marry those who are pleasing to you of the nisa. What is nisa? Nisa is a woman and this is an orphan. Nisa is a woman. What is Allah using the word Nisa? You see, using the word Nisa means amongst the orphans there will be those who have reached the age of puberty. And when a girl reaches the age of puberty, she is a woman in Islam, but not for your godless law. Your godless law says she has to reach 21 before she's a woman. You can take that and throw it into the garbage bin because that's not the Quran. You can take that and throw it into the garbage bin because that is not Islam. If that's the road you want to go, go and don't come back. We stay with the Quran. From the time a girl reaches the age of puberty, she is a woman. So Allah is saying that amongst the orphans, you can marry those who have reached the age of puberty because now they are women. So what do we do with that hadith in Sahih Bukhari? That the Prophet married me when I was six years of age. It is in Sahih Bukhari. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and I say, it's fabricated, it's false. Take it and throw it into the garbage bin because it's out into the Quran. فَنْكِحُ مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَا وَثُلَاسَ وَرُبَعَةً you can marry two, you can marry three, you can marry four. These are the orphan girls who have reached the age. When to Allah Ta'aliru. Now, when you marry a second wife, your first wife should not have to suffer. No. It cannot be at the expense of her standard of living. No. Her standard of living must be maintained. So you have to marry a second wife provided you have the means to do up at the same level with this one. You don't bring down this one so you could take a second one. No! So taking a second and a third and a fourth wife is permissible if you have the means to maintain the second and the third and the fourth at the same level that you maintain in the first. And if you fear that you cannot do that for work either then marry only one. But Allah does not stop there. He says, Oh ma malakata man. This is normally translated as slave, but Allah does not use the word slave. Allah does not use the word slave. Allah does not use the word slave. What word does Allah use for Malka Yamin? He used a nice and graceful word. He said, Fataya, you're a young man, you're a young woman. And the Prophet said, don't use the word slave. So don't come to me with the word slave. Take it to that door and leave it there. Don't come to me with the word slave. So you can marry one 
Oh mama lakat amen. You are also allowed to have intimate relations with a category of women who are not your wife. The child does not want that to happen. The child does not want that to happen. So this verse of the Quran is now in cold storage. Surah Al-Mu'minun. These are the ones who are successful. Who are they? Those who perform, who perform the salat. Those who give the zakat. Those who stay away from idle talk. Those who guard and protect their private parts. Except with their wives. Stop me if I'm wrong. Stop me if I'm wrong. Those who guard and protect their private parts. Except with their wives and with their malpedias. For with these there is no faith. There is no faith. So Allah in His wisdom has given us two categories of women with whom men can have intimate relations. Wives and malpedias. The jahl has come along to destroy this first one, only one wife. So when you're getting young man, when you're getting married, before your marriage, before your marriage, make it clear. If she says, I cannot tolerate my husband having a second wife, say to her, when that pretty head of yours can bow down before Allah and hope that we can come. Until then, sorry. Say that. That pretty head of yours must go bow before Allah's kitab. When you bow before Allah's kitab, then you're Muslim. So that is now destroyed. It takes a very, very grave, brave man today to take a second wife. You may have some in your surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> and as for Malka, I mean that is destroyed as well. But finish. It's now in a place called Cold Story. And that's why I said to you at the beginning, to be a Muslim today is a very lonely life. It's a very lonely life. This is our subject on the Islam and Mehraj. And I hope now at the end of the topic, you are beginning to connect the dots. To see that the Dajjal has a master plan, which has been at work for a long time, to ensure that men cannot have the summer one. Because men are being reduced. And women cannot travel. Because that pretty head will not bow before the Quran. May Allah bless our sisters of Islam. May Allah bless them with Jannah. May the houses for them in Jannah who say, if it is in the Quran, I submit to the word of Allah. Whether I am comfortable with it or I am not. When she says that, I submit to the word of Allah, I ask you to join with me. That Allah might build for her a house in Jannah. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna fahta sabir alim. Wa tuba alayna ya mulana inna fahta tawa wa rahim. Barakatuhu ya rahim. Ameen.